Hey Rebel Razor, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy. And thank you so much for joining me for it. So this is our third of four in this latest mini-series of looks at the short stories in the From a Certain Point of View collection celebrating the 40th anniversary of Return of the Jedi. This one is called My Mouth Never Closes and it's about the Sarlacc. Um, this one just happens to be my favorite of the four that we are looking at in this particular mini-series. This is another story where there's a good chunk of it that takes place outside the bounds of Return of the Jedi. And it basically tells you a lot about Sarlaccs who actually seem, you know, pretty amazing, all things considered. I mean, I really like dislike that beak that they stuck in the special edition. It just gives me the eebie-jeebies. But this particular Sarlacc apparently, and we are in full spoiler territory, by the way, is unlike many of its Sarlacc compatriots in that it just happens to be a vegetarian. <laughs> and it was somehow floating in space looking for a place to land and hang out and came to Tatooine super far in the past at the time when there were lush forests and you know rivers and you know water like it was actually a tropical paradise and leaves would fall off of trees into the Sarlacc's mouth and that's how it would survive. It would subsist. But then it you know, took <laughs> a bit of a nap, apparently a very long one in human reckoning, but maybe not so long for Sarlacc's. And when it woke up, the whole place was an absolutely ruined desert. And we don't necessarily know why that was the case, but the story ends up having kind of environmental themes, basically, and just considering how you know a planet can change from something so vibrant to something so desolate. And it's only actually recently that the phenomenon of throwing people into the Sarlacc pit has become a thing. However, the Sarlacc doesn't actually like it. As mentioned before, this seems to be a vegetarian Sarlacc and has decided for itself that it doesn't like to eat people like new creatures, especially those who have opinions. That's the way that the Sarlacc is phrasing it in their, you know, narrative, you know, monologue, basically. And so, you know, it's also reflecting on how, you know, the clothing and the stuff that they have on them when they're thrown in are also you know, very difficult to deal with and digest. And even, you know, Boba Fett going in is a particular pain to this poor Sarlacc. But the Sarlacc is also lonely, and by some amazing happenstance, it turns out that C-3PO is able to speak Sarlacc. So <laughs> the Sarlacc somehow is able to communicate with its tentacles, and 3PO is able to see that and read it, and uses his fingers to be able to make sort of tentacle motions and communicate with the Sarlacc as well. But this poor Sarlacc is also you know, missing companionship, and when 3PO falls off or is actually knocked off by R2-D2 into the sand to await pickup by our heroes, the Sarlacc actually reaches out and tries to communicate with 3PO and say, hey, you could stay with me, and we could be friends, and we could hang out, and... 3PO says, yeah, I have to go help my master. And so there's a conversation about whether droids are treated well. And hey, they were going to give you the job of the hut anyway. Like, they don't really care about you. I can pull you down in the sand and hide you. So that way we can, you know, make up our own community and spend time together and learn from each other. And 3PO ultimately turns down the Sarlacc. So the Sarlacc is left alone dealing with Boba Fett, who, you know, can't shunt into his nice ninth stomach to expel as quickly as possible. There's also a bit in there about how because it didn't like having everybody falling into its mouth that at one point it tried to use one of its tentacles to push somebody away up and got shot for its trouble. That, of course, is the reference to Lando and getting his leg wrapped in Han shooting it. But after 3PO is gone, there's just this beautiful bit where it says, there was so much I wanted to say to this golden creature that the highest good is to live in harmony with your surroundings, even if your surroundings change beyond all recognition while you slumber, that it's not in anybody's nature to do just one thing, that we all exist in a complex web of life, a grand ecosystem, and there's something that binds us all together. I wish I knew a word for it. It's a <laughs> ellipses, force perhaps, or an element, that anytime one person says no to the people who wish to use them, we all become freer, and this is the grand struggle that matters. That was just such a surprising turn, and it was just so beautiful. 
It was a really unexpected story and funny and sweet and sad. It was just fantastic. So this one is from Charlie Jane Anders. My mouth never closes about the Sarlacc pit. This is definitely my favorite of the four that we're talking about in this particular set of stories from the From a Certain Point of View collection. And that is actually going to do it for this episode of the podcast. It just remains for me to say thank you so much for joining me for it, as always. And may the force be with you wherever in the world you may be. 7 by 7 is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited by their respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyrighted by Star Wars 7 by 7 We hope you love it.